Hey, thanks for coming to 1500ESPN.com. I'm Derek Wetmore, and I'm going to share with you my five thoughts from Sunday's Twins game. After the game, the Twins made a roster move. Candice Vargas was optioned to AAA Rochester, and Eduardo Nunez activated from the disabled list. This is thought number one for me. Uh, it seems like some strange timing, of course, because Vargas has been hitting much better in May than he had in all of April, but consider what's next for the Twins. They have an off day on Monday, they play in Pittsburgh, a National League park, on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then they've got another off day on Thursday. So they won't need a designated hitter until at least, well, until Friday uh, in Chicago when they play the White Sox. So if they had decided that Vargas could use some at-bats in Rochester, I don't think the timing is that crazy. Uh, and, and there were definitely signs in April that Vargas needed to bring his strike zone in a little bit stop chasing balls outside of the strike zone, and really just have more balance. Paul Molitor said after Sunday's game that it was more about a mentality than it was about any mechanical flaw in Vargas's game. You can read more about that demotion, the timing, the decision, uh, the reasons that went into it, and Kenny Vargas's reaction on 1500ESPN.com. I posted a story to the Sportswire after the game. Let's move on. Thought number two. The Twins stole a pair of bases on Sunday. Danny Santana and Eddie Rosario both had successful swipes. Might not seem like a big deal in an 11-3 route, uh, but the Twins have been pretty bad at taking bases. Uh, as much as you can credit them for running the bases in a smart way on batted balls, the Twins have been really bad stealing bases. Entering Sunday's game, um, let's see if I can get the numbers for you. I believe that they were 11 of 23 it's about a 52% clip success rate. That's one of the worst in the majors. I wrote about that in my five thoughts column. Uh, the Reds, just to give you a comparison, are one of the best teams in baseball at stealing bases. They've stolen 43 bases in 49 tries. So uh, the Twins will need to step up in that department, I think, if they want to sustain some of this early success that they've had through six weeks with their lineup, they have the speed to do it. And Brian Dozier is a fast guy. Aaron Hicks is a fast guy, even though he doesn't really steal bases anymore. Uh, as I mentioned, Danny Santana, Eddie Rosario, they have some speed in the lineup. Sunday was a good step then in that direction to kind of up that stolen base percentage. You want to see a rate, 75% fair and respectable stolen base rate. Uh, the Twins are a long way off from that, but not very many attempts in this young season. Thought number three, uh, some good news and some bad news for the Twins' bullpen on Sunday. We'll start with the bad news. Brian Dunsing and Michael Tonkin gave up combined five runs in the sixth inning. That's what put the game out of hand. The bullpen gave up three more runs in the ninth inning. Uh, but, you you know, as, as I credited them on Saturday for getting through the end of the game and Bridging the gap to closer Glenn Perkins, who's a perfect 13 for 13 and save opportunities this season. Uh, I then have to criticize them for a poor performance on Sunday. Uh, to give up eight runs in four innings is not going to cut it, to say the least. And the bullpen, frankly, was the biggest reason the Twins lost the game on Sunday, and especially the reason that it turned into a rout that it did. Uh, but, thought number four, the good news, Casey Fien threw a bullpen session on Sunday. He's on the disabled list with a shoulder injury, the Twins set up man, but he uh, apparently reported no pain in that bullpen session. That's a good sign for the Twins. He'll throw another one on Wednesday, General Manager Terry Ryan said, and I talked to Fiend before the game. If that Wednesday session goes good, it sounds like the plan is to send him to AAA Rochester where he'll face a few hitters and get reconditioned uh, before the Twins would activate him from the disabled list. But it's worth pointing out that Fien hasn't missed such an extended amount of time that he'll need some kind of lengthy rehab stay. Uh, it's not like, you know, this is spring training for him. He's just going to need to face hitters, see what it's like again, kind of get reacclimated to pitching in a live environment. Um, but the positive step on Sunday uh, is good news for the Twins. They could definitely use their setup men back in the bullpen. Blaine Boyer has been great. Uh, results-wise over his last 16, 17 innings. But you trust, I think, personally, I think you trust Casey Fien a little bit more in that eighth inning role. Um, and at the very least, even if you do trust Blaine Boyer as a setup man, a right-handed setup man, it's nice to have options. The Twins would give themselves options with Casey Fien's uh, 
basically being reinstated from the disabled list. Thought number one, the starting pitcher on Sunday, Kyle Gibson. Only lasted five innings, he threw 94 pitches, and the thing that stood out to me that I was watching for during the game was to see Gibson's changeup. He had a, a really effective outing his last time out in Detroit, and I think a large part of that success was because of his changeup. In Detroit, he had six strikeouts, no walks, I believe. Five of those strikeouts were swing and miss on the changeup. That's something that we hadn't seen from Gibson really before, at least not consistently anyways. That was gone on Sunday. He didn't get many swings and misses. In fact, I don't think he had any swings and misses on his changeup. Threw 17 of them of his 94 pitches. Wrote about that and why that's important to Gibson's success. Uh, not a great outing for Gibson. Five innings, three earned runs on eight hits, uh, two walks, two strikeouts. But uh, he's, he's had good performances so far this season. I don't believe that Kyle Gibson is the biggest part of the Twins' rotation problem. Change up will be something to watch going forward. That can be if that can become a really effective weapon and an out pitch for him. Gibson has a real chance to take a nice step forward as a starter for this for uh, for the Twins this season. That'll do it for this video. Uh, Phil Mackey and I recorded a Touch 'Em All podcast on Sunday morning. I would advise you to check that out. I think we talked for like something like thirty or forty minutes on this episode. We talked about a lot of interesting things. Aaron Hicks, what his future is and his contributions to the lineup. Uh, talked a lot about Joe Maurer and who he is at this stage of his career. Also, the extra mile that Torrey Hunter goes between games to prepare himself for the next game, and a lot of that is leading to some of his early season success here through six weeks, and it's been pretty impressive from a 39-year-old at the plate. Uh, so check out that episode. It's on iTunes. Go search for podcasts. Touch them all. You'll find it there. You can subscribe Save yourself the time next week so you don't have to search for it. You can just have it sent right to your iTunes account every week. Uh, but signing off for this video from Target Field, I'm Derek Wetmore. Thanks for coming to 1500ESPN.com. I'll catch you next time.